let's just dive right in. So uh, once again, you know, if you want to follow along with any of this curriculum, just go to jigsawlabs.io, then click on free curriculum and scroll pretty much all the way down. See this, uh, whatever this is, like a Rubik's Cube, and then click on Intro to Neurons. All right, so you know, I have this in note form, so we can just start here. And the place that we're starting is really with a neural network. Um, so, you know, this is a slice of a neural network from a human brain. And just to interpret it a little bit, uh, each of these like spherical things uh, with the squiggly lines coming out, these are different neurons. And you can see that these neurons are like lighting up or not lighting up, and they're touching each other. And the point to take away from this is that effectively, like the lighting up or not of one neuron is influencing whether or not other successive neurons are going to light up. So you can imagine that, you know, if you're deciding whether or not to eat a piece of food or eat, you know, something, maybe you're in the wild and have to look for food and you have to make a decision, well, maybe you smell that food and these neurons are directly taking in that sense and that sensory perception and they're assessing uh, you know does it smell salty or sweet or you know rotten or fresh and that decision is then the influence uh, from these neurons is then being passed along to these other neurons until finally you make a decision as to whether or not you should eat that food or taste it or whatever so that, that's an entire neural network, and that's the subject of the next 20 lessons or so. Um, so instead of understanding the entire neural network, let's go deeper into just a single neuron. So this is a single neuron, right? You can see it kind of, it does seem to bear resemblance to what we see above. And this is where the neuron takes in the inputs, right? These are called dendrites, and you can imagine maybe those different sensory perceptions of like the smell and whether or not it seems like you know there's sweetness uh, for thinking of like berries and whether or not they're fresh or whatever that smells like that's being passed into the cell body so it goes from the dendrites into the cell body and then this cell body is going to essentially make a decision um, or a determination about it could be anything whether or not there's this is a sweet thing and it sends that, that information through the axon, all right? So these are the dendrites, the cell body, and then the axon. And those terms aren't really important, but this process of taking in inputs, coming to some, using some sort of formula to then uh, output a determination, that process we're gonna see again and again. So let's see it again. This is you know an artificial neuron. So it's the same thing, right? We have our dendrites, taking in some information, and then gets passed into the cell body. The cell body uses some sort of formula, and then emits uh, some sort of output. So this could just be, we can think of this output as just like, does the neuron light up or not? And for our purposes, maybe we represent that in math as just like a one or a zero. So we take in some inputs, and then is the neuron gonna fire or not? Right, we represent that with a one or a zero. Um, cool. So like even though we're focusing in on like a single neuron, uh, single neurons can be like very powerful. Um, so for example, uh, this is like a pretty famous data set in uh, data science called you know the breast cancer data set. Um, it's from pretty early on. Uh, and what happened uh, was a professor had, I forget if it was graduate students or nurses, uh, basically record attributes of different cells. Right, like how large is the cell, how many bumps uh, are is in each cell. And you know, the point was to then take those attributes and by looking at the size and the number of concavities among other attributes, have use a machine learning algorithm to predict whether or not the cell was cancerous or not. And we can use a single neuron to do that, right? Um, so you can see like here I'm kind of representing that data. And just to break this down a little bit, each row here, right, we only have two, you can think of as a separate uh, example, a separate cell that's potentially cancerous. So this is maybe the first cell that we're looking at. 
and we see that the size is 0.4, and we also see that the number of concavities is two, and then here's a second cell, right? Different area, different size, 0.6, and then different number of concavities. Um, so right, this is just representing maybe two different cells, one and two. And now let's just like add some terms, and these are general machine learning terms. So we'll say like each example, or each row of data, is an observation. So above we have two observations representing two different cells. And then we can break down an observation into the features, right? So there's features, which is each attribute of the observation. And I like to think of this, it's like you can think of features as an attribute of an observation, or even almost like uh, input, right? Because if you think about it, these features are going to be used to predict uh, whether or not a cell is cancerous. So these are kind of the inputs that are going to allow us to then predict, uh, hopefully, whether or not a cell is cancerous. And what we're trying to predict, that, that is our target. So here, like, is cancerous. All right, that's our target in this example. Okay. And again, like this, is, this applies to machine learning in general. You know, you'll have these different observations, and we'll say like each example is a separate observation, and an observation consists of these different attributes or inputs uh, that are then going to hopefully allow us to predict uh, an output, you know, something that we're the goal. And here, um, that's is it cancerous, and the name for that goal, what we're trying to predict, that is the target. So just to remind us how this applies to our cell, right? We can imagine that we feed in information about, uh, you know, a potentially cancerous cell's area, uh, potentially cancerous cell's number of concavities, right? These are going to, I guess, a separate dendrite in the model of our neuron, and then this this information goes into the uh, the cell body, the neuron cell body, and from here we get a prediction is a cancerous, which to us is just a one or a zero, right? So we'll maybe pass in the number 0.4 and the number 2, 0.4 and 2, that will somehow go into some formula. And then based on that formula, we can predict, hopefully, whether or not the cell is, uh, you know, that, pretend, that breast cancer cell is uh, cancerous or not. So let's see what this means in code, all right? So here's our data, right? Well, ultimately, we wanna represent this using Python, right? So let's start with just like a single observation. And that, so to do that, if you think about it, we could probably just assign a variable, one called cell area and set that to 0.4. Uh, we could also do like cell concavities and set that to two, right? And then let's also pretend that we know that this cell is cancerous. So we'll say is cancerous or uh, uh, cell cancerous equals one. All right, so we'll say at this size, eh, we'll change it to a zero. At this size and two concavities, we'll say that it's zero. All right, and another word for this is just the target. So maybe we'll just call that target. And just to, uh, like I guess, introduce you to this a little bit early, in the future you'll see we can actually combine these features into a list, you know? So we could say like, okay, here's our features of the observation, and that's maybe 0.4 and two, and then the target is zero. All right, cool. Now, that's just the data. Remember, the point is to maybe pass through this data into a neuron and get back uh, a prediction. So let's let's deal with that, and we'll we'll stick with this format for now. All right, cool. And maybe we'll even yeah, we'll, we'll keep that for now. So we'll do we'll write a function. We'll call this is cancerous. And if we think about what we wanted to return, uh, ultimately it should probably return a one or a zero. For now, we'll do something a little different. We'll, I'll show you in a second. So we'll do is cancerous, and these are the inputs, right? Cell area, cell concavities. And so this probably makes sense as function arguments. So cell area, cell concavities. And for now, we can just add them. 
we'll just return the output. So we'll say is cancerous. Cell area is 0.4. Cell concavities is 2. Let's, yay, we did that. So for now, what we can say, you know, remember this ideally is going to return a 1 or a 0, right? Where 1 means is cancerous and a 0 means not. But for now, what we'll do is let's just say if it outputs a positive number, that is cancerous. If it outputs a negative number, then, then it's not cancerous, okay? And one thing you'll notice is that like for all practical purposes, it seems like our function will always output a positive number because cell area is always gonna be at least something, right? It's always gonna be like 0.1 or higher. Um, and cell concavities, well, the lowest that's gonna be is zero. So we're always going to output a positive number. So instead, in our formula, we need to update it. And normally, you add something called a bias. So bias is just a counterweight to the rest of the function. So if here's like one part of the function, we're like adding up you know, the features, then our counterweight would be like a negative number. Like let's just say like negative 4 for now. So now notice what happens, right? Now our function, we pass through 0.4 and 2. Here we actually get a negative number, which means that translates to a zero, okay? One is cancerous, zero is not. Here we get a negative 1.6. So that looks like, um, that looks like we get a prediction of not cancerous. Let's just try another one real fast. So do is cancerous. Let's say the size is like 0.6. And there's like five concavities, very bumpy, I suppose. And here we get a positive number, and that means that we're going to predict that it is cancerous. Cool. All right. Um, so these are just predictions, right? Like that our neurons making. Uh, we'd have to assess later on, like actually, you know, have a graduate student or a nurse, you know, find the real answer and then see how good a job our neurons do. But this is the prediction based on these inputs. And so far, I suppose it's pretty good. Um, I'm, I don't know if it's good at all, but maybe it's fine. So let, let's move on to doing this in math. Um, if we want, we, so we saw how to represent this in, uh, in code. If we want to represent this mathematically, we can, oftentimes this function is called like z of x, okay? And we'll say z of x here, we'll just name this first feature, cell area. And we could just say cell area, I suppose. Um, and then plus cell concavities, right? Minus some sort of bias term. Let's just put in here plus bias, uh, where our bias is, uh, you know, negative 4. But really, more generically, oftentimes you'll see this represented as z of x equals x sub 1 plus x sub 2, right, plus the bias term. So x sub 1 represents the first feature of a single observation, meaning here it's that cell area. And x sub 2 is that second feature, cell concavities, plus bias. So this really does translate to what we saw before of 0.4 uh, plus 2 um, minus 4, right? And then we get some sort of output of like negative 1.6. And then as we pass through th these other things, well, that means we have a different x1, a different x2, and therefore we get, you know, a different output. Let's just see that. So that would be this 0.6 plus 5 minus 4, right? So there's that number. All right, so this is how the point is, is like now you see how to represent this in math, right? It's just this z of x, x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus bias, where bias in this case is a negative number. Now, one thing to like, I guess, point out is if we look at our original function uh, here, you can see, all right, well, we have this is cancerous, and we have these values of 0.4 and 2. Um, and then we, right, we pass these through here. So this will give me that negative 1.6. Okay, so just passing these through the chute. Um, if I increase this cell area by 1, say to 1.4, right, 
Well, the output just right, went from negative 1.6 to negative 0.6, so the output increases by 1. If I increase this guy by 1 from 2 to 3, again the output increases by 1. All right, let's just do it again. Uh, see that? It's a little easier. Um, so the point is like a change in cell area is having the same influence as a change as an increase in the cell concavities. Like we're saying essentially that each each feature here, cell area, cell concavities, they're both going to influence the prediction of our neuron equally. But that might not be that might not be what we want. Like maybe we think cell area should be twice as important as cell concavities and that if there's an increase in cell area from say 1.4 to 2.4, well, that that output, the output here should double, All right? So let's just see that. The way that we can do that is just by adding a, a two, right? This time we'll just multiply cell area by two. So if I pass through a 1.4 here, or let's even increase it to 2.4, the output here will not increase by one, but will increase by two, right? All right, so we did 2.4, we got 4.8 plus 4 minus 4, so these cancel out, so that gives us the 2 times 2.4 is 4.8. Um, all right, but, but the point is, if is if, if I increase this by 1, what was this before? Oh, this was 4. If I increase this by 1, meaning 4 to 5, what, it, the influence is only 1, right? The influence on cell concavities on our neuron is just 1, whereas the influence uh, on cell area from 2.4 to 3.4 is 2. So what we're effectively saying is by adding weights, right, we are, we are as well simply weighing features, uh, having, you know, a, of different importance and having, having our features have different influences. Vary the influence on the output of the norm. Okay, so this is kind of a cool thing because we might imagine that, you know, if you go back to this, well, there might be various features and we might not want to, we might want to have our prediction function be more sensitive to a change in some features than other features, right? So we might say that, okay, maybe the color is uh, very important and therefore that weight might be even higher when we, if we added in a, a feature for the color, maybe that'd be like a three or a four. All right, so this is kind of cool. It allows us to tweak the hypothesis function of our neuron. So again, we just saw this in code, right? Here's what it means to add our weights in code. And let's just see it now in math. So if this was our, our function before, now it's going to be in x1 really represented cell area, or x2 represented cell concavities, and this was our bias, right? It was this negative four. Well now we can do, we would put this as z of x equals w sub one, x sub one, I'll explain this in a second, plus w sub two, x sub two, plus bias. Let's just put in the multiplication. All right, now let's take out the multiplication. So what's the point of this? Um, the point is just like, okay, this is how we're representing what we call like uh, a function or a linear function with weights. Uh, most people just call this a linear function, but I'll say linear function with weights. And you can see that there is a, a different weight for each of our features. So this was our cell area weight, W1. This was our cell concavities weight, W2. Here it's just the number one. So just to translate this back, we would say, and then we'll kind of wrap up, we'll say that this is z of x equals uh, 2 times by cell area plus 1 times by cell concavities. All right, and that's looking not as good as I hoped. All right, better. Cool, so this is our function. And remember, oh, plus the bias, minus 4. So, right, this kind of works. We can say, we can pass through some numbers here. Uh, it's going to give differing impor importance to cell area than cell concavities. Or another way of putting this is it will be more sensitive to a change in cell area than cell concavities. And we said that if this outputs a positive number, right, then we will make a prediction that it's cancerous. 
Um, and if it outputs a negative number, um, then we will make a prediction that it's benign, that it's not cancerous. So let's just see that again. Take this here. And here it's a negative number. And because of that, we are not predicting cancerous. We increase this by a bit. Say this was a different cell. This cell, it's larger. And I guess that's the signal of or uh, increased likelihood that's cancerous. And so we are making a prediction that is cancerous. All right, so that's it for now. Um, the next lesson that we will go through is really, I guess, adding a bit of math or summarizing this function with a component of math. Um, then one more topic, and then actually we'll, we'll go right into building our first neural network. So I'll see you guys in the next lesson.